In this course, we cover all of the ideal characteristics of an experiment for maximal control over your variables and the relationships you are measuring. An experiment that has all of these ideal characteristics is referred to as a true experiment. However, sometimes given the circumstances we have to work with, not all characteristics can be present in an experiment. In this lesson, we will talk about these other types of experiments and how they differ from true experiments. A true experiment offers the most control over variables and therefore the best approach to exploring causal relationships between independent and dependent variables. There are three main characteristics that all true experiments must have. First, they must involve random assignment of participants to groups or conditions. In the case of a within participant design, participants must experience the conditions in a random or counterbalanced order. When we say counterbalanced order, we simply mean that different participants experience the conditions in different orders. True experiments must also involve control over the manipulation of the independent variable. And finally, true experiments must have some sort of control condition or control group in which the participants are like those in the experimental group which receives a treatment in every way except that they don't receive the treatment or that they receive a different version of the treatment. However, sometimes we cannot control all of the variables in a study we cannot randomly assign participants to groups or conditions, or we are not interested in a causal relationship. Next, let's talk about quasi-experimental designs. Quasi-experimental designs are characterized by no random assignment of participants into groups. They may also lack a control group and possibly lack control over the manipulation of the independent variable. Most often in these cases, there is little or no control over the independent variable. The nature or the timing of the treatment or comparison variable, the independent variable, may not be controlled. Sometimes the treatment variable is not a treatment at all, but rather a participant variable. For example, we may want to conduct an experiment looking at studying preferences between women and men. In a study such as this, we can't randomly assign participants since we need only men in one group and only women in another group. Further, gender would be our independent variable, something we can't manipulate. This is also true for experiments looking at particular patient groups, such as those with autism versus those participants that are typically developing. This is an example of a specific type of quasi-experimental design referred to as a non-equivalent groups design. In a non-equivalent groups design, we have an experimental group and a control group, but participants are not randomly assigned to those groups. Oftentimes, this is because the groups are known to be different at the outset, from the beginning. You can't randomly assign participants with autism, or typically developing controls in a study of autism, or smokers and non-smokers in a study of the effects of smoking, and we know from the outset of the study the two groups are going to be different. Pre-experiments. In addition to the lack of randomization of participants, pre-experimental design is characterized by no control group. Because of this, it cannot be used to infer causality. This type of design is best for descriptive studies. Pre-test, post-test design is one type of pre-experiment. It allows us to see if participant responses are different after manipulation than before the manipulation. However, we can never be sure that the difference is due to the manipulation alone since we don't have a control group. The control group would be able to tell us how much change there would be from the pretest to the post-test without the manipulation. For example, it is possible that the simple passage of time introduces some other variable to cause a change in responses. 
So with pre-experimental designs, all we can show is if there was some sort of change, but we can't be sure of what caused the change. For example, say we want to know if students' knowledge of a subject increases after a lesson. We can test the student's level of knowledge before the lesson and again after the lesson to see if it is increased, but we wouldn't be able to say that any change was due to the lesson itself. And finally, we have non-experiments. By definition, non-experiments are defined as lacking all three of the characteristics of true experiments. Random assignment of participants, control over the manipulation of the independent variable, and the presence of a control group or condition. In some cases, a non-experiment may have a control group, but the other two characteristics will be absent. One common type of non-experimental design is correlational design. In this case, the relationship or correlation between two variables is determined with descriptive statistics. For example, we can look to see if the values of one variable increase as the values of another variable increase, such as in the chart to the right of age and test score. Or perhaps the values of one variable decrease as those of the other variable increase, as we might find if we were comparing age with use of technology. So here we have a table summarizing how quasi-experiments, pre-experiments, and non-experiments compare to true experiments, by which of the three main characteristics of true experiments they have. Along the left, we have the three main characteristics of randomization of participants, the presence of a control group or control condition, and control over the manipulation of the independent variable. Depending on the source, sometimes you will see the term non-experiment used to describe any experimental design missing even one of the three characteristics of true experiments, with quasi and pre-experiments lumped under that term. As mentioned before, it is ideal for experiments to contain all three of these characteristics, but in some circumstances, it is just not possible or ethical to run a true experiment. Quasi, pre, and non-experiments can all still provide us with valuable, useful data.